Hey, Eighth Grade Bible, this is Mr. Barnett, and of course we're doing another uh, video from my back porch. Uh, you can see my neighbor's house behind me. Um, a couple weeks ago we talked about taming your tongue. Uh, last week we talked about um, how our words affect other people. Today we're going to start talking about success. Uh, the actual title of the lesson is True Success. Um, I've been to more than one high school reunion, and every time you get together with people you went to high school with uh, years later, they always talk about the most successful person. Uh, and a lot of times when we talk about in, in our, our society, success is tied to money. So the more money you make, the better off you are. And of course, money is nice, but I've known some very wealthy people who have all the money in the world who are very unhappy and would not consider themselves necessarily successful. Uh, the Bible defines success in Psalm 37, 4. It says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Whatever you want, as long as he's, you seek God first, as a matter of fact, Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Uh, we start seeking the things, hoping that will make us happy and come to find out it never does. Uh, John 3, uh, first, or sorry, 3 John uh, chapter 1, verse 2, said, Beloved, I pray that in all res respects you may prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. God says, as we tie our, our hearts, our minds, our spirits to him, then he will give us all the rest of the stuff. He says that you prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. In other words, at the rate your soul prospers, then God will prosper everything else. You might want to write that down. As we, as we allow our soul and our spirit to prosper, God says, I will prosper everything else for you. So I'll make a way where there seems to be no way. I'll give you money. I'll give you what you want. As long as you take delight in me first, seek first the kingdom of God. Um, if your soul is not prospering, no amount of success in any other area will ever satisfy you. You can be the head of everything. You can be the number one at whatever you want to be. You can have everything, every toy, every whatever. But if your soul is not prospering, eventually it'll, it'll come up short and you'll feel like you've been cheated, okay? Um, write this down because I'm going to tell you this and this is so important. God is more concerned about your character than he is about your comfort. God is more concerned about your character in other words, who you are, the values that you portray, the things that you say you want, the attitudes and things that you, you line your life up with, where you draw the lines in your life. God is more concerned about your character than he ever is about your comfort. Now, we're concerned about our own comfort, let's be honest. We want to be comfortable. We want to do what we want. We want to have good things. We want to go where we want. We want to have all kinds of stuff. And God says there's nothing wrong with that. But... If you're not prospering in him, then he'll take all that stuff away to build your character. And most of the time, character is built in adversity, not comfort. Okay? Um, how to succeed, how to prosper. You want to write this down. Number one, we must live according to God's principles. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 and 25 says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will la not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. In other words, you and I have to do things God's way to get God's blessing. And if you want God's blessing on your life, and you do, if you want to seek success, and you do, then you have to do things God's way. Uh, my dad said when I was a kid that cheaters never prosper. And he got that from Scripture. Here's what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive a victor's crown except those competing according to the rules. God has rules. Now, the rules that God sets up are very contrary a lot of times to the rules that our society sets up. Be nice to people who are nasty to you. Give and it shall be given. Um... You know, don't seek to be the first, seek to be the last and let other people go ahead of you. And that all seems counterproductive to what we want to do. God says, if you'll do it my way, I'll make sure that you end up being the head and not the tail. I'll make sure that you end up first and not last. 
but we want to push to the front. We want to get what we want. We want to go for what we want. And then we can't figure out why we're not happy. So first of all, you must uh, li live according to God's principles. Second of all, again, you want to write this down. We must be vigilant. In other words, we must keep trying. Success is not getting what we want or getting what we strive after one time. Success is not is not doing it one time. Success is doing good over and over and over again. I like to play golf. And putting the ball in the first hole, that's great. Guess what? There's 17 other holes. And so you may have a you may have a bad uh, score on one hole. Guess what? Go to the next one. And keep trying, keep getting better at it, keep working at it. Success never comes when we try one time. Think of anything you've done for a period of time and you realize the first day you did it, you weren't very good at it. But after a while, you kept trying, you kept getting better, and before you know it, you're doing what you want to do. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not be weary in doing good, for in a time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. And so not only do we have to live by God's principles, we have to keep trying. We have to keep working at it, okay? Um, it's not how many times you get knocked down. It's how many times you get back up. You're going to get knocked down in trying to do anything, whether it's school, whether it's work, whether it's relationships, whether it's sports, whatever it is, you're going to fail. You know, I love baseball and the best hitters fail 70% of the time. But it's not how many times you fail, it's how many times you get back up from failure and try, try again. Okay, so not only do we have to be live according to God's principles, we have to keep vigilant. Number three, again, you want to write this down, we must keep good company. Um, you hang around unsuccessful people, you're going to be unsuccessful. But if you hang around people who are successful, people who are doing it correctly, people who are doing it right, you will end up uh, learning from them and doing it right. Uh, here's what here's what Psalm 1, 1 through 3 says. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the steps of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. This person is a, like a tree planted by the st stream of waters, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. So you want to you wanna prosper, you want to be successful, then hang with people who are going to be successful. You get Sometimes you got to make hard decisions and you got to say as much as I like this person or as much as they like me, this relationship isn't leading me to where I want to be. So do you want the relationship or do you want what you want? And you can't have both sometimes. So you got to be careful. So not only, number one, again, of course, is living by God's principles. Number two, we must keep vigilant. We must keep trying. Number three, we must keep good company. And number four, we must think about, we must think about godly prosperity. Psalm 4, 8 says, think on good things. Whatever you think about is what you're going to be. That's what education is, teaching you how to think. When I went to business school, I didn't think like a businessman. When I got out of business school, I felt like a businessman. So everything I, I do, I look at from a business perspective. Why? Because I spent four years learning business. And so it changed the way I think. So when I look at even things like comedy or school or church, I look at them from a business perspective. I look at them from a marketing perspective because that's the degree I got. I got a, a marketing degree. So that's what you're doing. You're being educated so that you stretch your mind to learn how to think. And when you think on good things, good things will happen. And if you think on bad things, of course, bad things will happen. Um, there are two kinds of, of things to strive for. And you want to write this down. Temporary things and eternal things. Temporary things are things that are not going to last. And I say, well, Mr. Barnett, they're going to last through my life. And that's true. Keep in mind, you're only promised 70 years on this earth. Um, you may live to be 80, 90, 100, whatever, but eventually you're going to pass from this earth. There's only two things going to go into eternity, people and the word of God. So if you invest in that, if you invest in people and you invest in the word of God, you will always be successful. Now, can you invest in things like businesses and money? Sure. I mean, I've got a retirement program, but again, I know that eventually I won't need the retirement program because I'm going to die. I'm going to be taken up to heaven and I'm going to give it to my kids or give it to whoever. 
So you have to be thinking along the lines of temporary things are fine, but eternal things are better, okay? So two things you want to think about. Uh, one last thing, and then I'm going to let you go. Uh, as we're striving and working towards success, if we're doing it God, God's way, we can have peace. And there are three kinds of peace. I'm going to give you this. Write this down, okay? Number one is upward peace. In other words, peace with God. If you and I are doing what God has called us to do, then we'll be at peace with God, okay? Outward peace, obviously, is peace with others. And finally, inward peace is peace with ourselves. And I've known people that have peace with God, but they don't have peace with others, and they don't have peace with themselves. I've known people that had peace with other people and peace with themselves, but they weren't at peace with God. And of course, I've known people that had uh, peace with God and peace with others, but they were their own worst enemy. So again, write all that down. Um, I'm going to be sending out Monday your next assignment. Uh, hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you're, you're uh, being successful at home. Uh, keep up with your work, and I will see you when I see you. Have a great day. Make it stop.